Black Eye Flies RC here coming to you from the main cave. We're going to go over the radio setup on the Arrows T33. A uh, great little shooting star. It's a great little plane. It's very stable. And uh, I, now the manufacturer says you run her on 3S, and that's, and that's what uh, is recommended. However, I run all my little 50 millimeters on 4S, and I have yet to have a problem with it. Now, I'm not telling you to do that because that's not what the manufacturer off or tells you to do, but that's what that guy's going to do. And I've already got one in here. I'm going to show you what I've done. Now, I have, if you remember in the assembly video, you had them two pigtails coming up out of that hole that I showed you that you put to the bottom of the fuselage, that, come, that comes to the bottom of the fuselage, where you put your uh, ailerons. Well, you hook those up, see how they're, See the yellow on this side on each of these? Yellow to yellow, yellow, yellow. It's always light to light, dark to dark. The brown's on this side, the red's in the middle, and the yellow's on the right. That's how you always, 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 always um, orientation. Anytime you're connecting two servo leads together, light to light, dark to dark. Just remember that and it won't go wrong. Okay? That's where I have mounted the AR-410. Right, remember I told you in the assembly video that there was a just screaming for a receiver. Well, that's where I put it, right there on some do on Gorilla double two-sided tape, right there. And the uh, elevator. As soon as I bound it, the first thing I did was I hooked up. Um, well, you see this little uh, quick connect right there? I'm told you wrong. A little quick connect right there. Okay, a little grub screw in there. You take a little. Allen wrench, okay. You loosen that Allen wrench to where those two, those two metal uh, rods can can move freely back and forth. And what that is, that's the two metal rods that are hooking to your um, your elevators back here, okay, where they can slide freely. And then what you do is you pick which hole. You want to connect each of the others. There's a choice of the outer one or the inner one. Well, I like the inner one because I like the most control of a control service. I made sure these were linear. Both of these are linear. I went and hooked them both up, and since the rods will move, I could adjust this to where it's all nice and level once I got them hooked up, and then tighten that down, that grub screw down using that little Allen wrench. And then now, because as soon as I bound it, that elevator servo automatically uh, centered itself. So now I know that my elevator is perfectly centered and trimmed. And they already had the they already had the ailerons done, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, CG on the plane is 65 to 75 millimeters back from the leading edge uh, edge root. Now the leading edge of the wing is here. The wing root is always where the fuselage and the wing touch. And on a jet, lots of times like this, you have a, a curved or an angle. You measure from here, not from the leading edge, but from where the, where the wing root touches. And that puts the 65 millimeter there, 75 there. So put your battery in there. And what you do is you just keep moving that battery backwards and forwards until you get her to where she's just perfectly level on that CG point, which you can see she is. So once I found where I like that battery I, and like that CG, I anchored it down and I made a little mark here. That way I know to put this battery from this mark back and that way I know I've got CG each time. Okay, I have my throttle cut set to H. Let me show you how you do throttle cut real quick. And I'll show you my throws. Okay. All you do for throttle cut is you go to your throttle cut and you just pick your switch. I picked H. Okay. Like I say you want, I just picked H is what I did. And that made my throttle cut. A, hundred, a negative 100% is fine. And uh, for my rates, I just had two, I have three rates. I put it on my G. For my high, I have, for ailerons, I can, you can see I have 100%, over 20% expo. This is, and this is the same for elevator, so I'm not going to show both, but same for elevator. For, uh, for aileron, 
Okay, for aileron, I have 100% with 20% expo for high. For mid rates, I have 85% with 20% expo. And for low rates, I have 20%, 70% 70 throws with 20% expo. So low is 70 over 20, mid is 85 over 20, and high is 100 over 20. And that's exactly the same for um, the elevator. I did the same rates. So let me show you. This, this is low rates for, elevator, for aileron and elevator. This is mid rates, which is the 85 over 20. Okay, and then this is high, which is 100% over 20% expo, which is probably what I will run most of the time. Um, in case you've never set a timer before, I would set your timer for three and a half minutes. So you go to timer, bump that down, oh, uh, trying to do this holding monitor for three and a half minutes. And then while you're here, you get past all this, go to this last screen here and inhibit all these. Otherwise you're going to hear that every time you touch that uh, throttle. You're going to hear that. Okay. Now let's let's go back and go while we're here. I'll show you how to do voice prompts on your timer. Okay. See where you get to the screen here. Then you pick whatever one you, whatever one you want. I like voice for everything except for the uh, time expired. Just use your roller back and forth for time expired. I like voice and vibe. And just back out. Now that gives me my, my voice prompts. Now, we covered CG, we covered my rates. Um, I showed you my battery placement, I showed you my uh, receiver placement. And with it, I have suggested an AR410 uh, for this because it's just absolutely perfect. Now, if you look right there, see that it says S bus mode? I had that plugged into channel four on my transmitter, I mean, on my, on my receiver. Channel four on a spectrum is always rudder. Okay, so that's because I wanted my B switch to be all my different modes. Okay, you have direct, dynamic, and stability. I'll show them to you after I show you how I set it up. Okay, this is how you set it up. You plug that S bus into your rudder, okay? This is after you've already bound the model, you've already made your profile and everything works. Okay, before you, you're gonna go to here, you go to channel assign. Make sure that aux one Okay, is on whatever switch you want to use. I like using my B switch, but I put it on B. Okay, and that's the, the input config. In other words, how you're going to input the information to the receiver. I'm using my B switch. And then you go over here. Now port assigned, where did you where is it physically coming back from out of the uh, out of the receiver? And in that case, it's the rudder channel. Okay. Rudder. My rudder channel is being used for aux one. Rudder is aux one. Okay. And then when you do that, it automatically it has assigned the different the different levels of the uh, vector system is, is assigned now to, to your B switch. Now, this is a three position switch. You want a three position switch because then you get all three levels. Now, by default. The lowest position, or the position down or away from the transmit, the transmitter, is their stability mode, which is the same thing as self-level. Okay, if you look at my at the elevator, look how it's going up. Okay, watch the ailerons. Notice how they're staying in position. That would level the plane. Okay, see how they're they're staying there, they're staying up it would level the plane. Now watch the elevator. See how, how you can see how it's staying up? That would level the plane. Now, 
if you switch it to the middle position, okay, now no gyro, no nothing. That's the direct mode. And then if you pull it towards you, hear that? Hear those gyros? Okay, same thing. Hear the gyros with stability? Stability, self level. Direct mode, no control, no, no gyro at all. It's just you and the plane. Okay? And then towards you is dynamic mode, or in the, re in the reflex world, it's optimized in the spectrum mode. In the spectrum world, it's called AS3X or wind mitigation. Okay? And that's your, uh, helps you, that just helps buffer against wind and outside forces. As you're flying along, you know, and wind hits it from the side and knocks that wing down, the computer realizes that that wasn't your input. You didn't do that. The wind did that, and it automatically compensates. I mean, it's not 100%, but it does a pretty good, gyro does a pretty good job of keeping you straight and level. And, uh, so, and that's the explanation of those three levels, and that's why you need a three-position switch so you can pick which one you want. You might want to fly around and direct, you know, and, and you know, no, no gyro at all. Or you, I like using the, the uh, stability mode for launching the airplane. You know, when I go to launch that airplane, you know, like that, it's going to automatically level it and does um, gives me a much better chance of a successful launch. And then when I'm flying, I'll switch it to uh, um, dynamic mode. All right, and we covered CG. We've covered how the uh, vector system works. We've covered battery placement. We've covered uh, where I put the, my recommended AR, Spectrum AR410 or any four channel receiver you want. It doesn't have to be gyroed or anything. The vector system takes care of your gyro for you and your stability and all that. You just need a plain Jane receiver. Now, if you're wondering, and you say, fat guy, what's that little yellow wire coming off the throttle of that little yellow wire, you're not going to do anything with that. You're going to leave that off the side. That's just it's a stock ESC they use, okay, to make this plane. That little yellow wire is for a reverse function. And you do not need to worry or have anything to do with reverse function with a belly landing airplane. Okay, this thing lands on its belly. You don't have to worry about reverse because as soon as she lands on the ground, she stops. Now, if this plane had landing gear and you had a long rollout, well, then yeah. But now that means you're going to need at least, there's no such thing as a five channel receiver. So you'd have to have a six channel receiver and plug that into whatever, just like you did the, the rudder thing with the uh, um, gyro, with, a, with a ref, or the vector system, you'd have to have an open channel on your receiver and then assign that to a switch, a, a two position switch for on and off or reverse. And you know you don't have gear on this. This is not a ne not necessary. It's just that's part of that receiver, not necessarily part of the intention of the plane. I guess you could, and maybe as you're sliding down your runway on the belly, you could hit reverse if you had a larger receiver, and maybe that. But it's not necessary with this kind of plane. So, well, there you go. I can't think of anything else we need to cover. Um, other than just need to get a maiden in on this little thing and just on this little T33 and, and just so you know folks that's a good looking plane isn't it just so you know yes I'll put a link to the purchase of this plane in this in the in this video however if you'll wait till November 17th of, of this of 2023 between November 17th and December 3rd I think it's December 3rd there's going to be their Black Friday sale. Okay, now if you miss that sale, you can still use my link and my code and get $10 off the price of this plane. But if you'll buy it, during, use my link and, and get this plane during that sale, I'll be putting a, another code in after the 17th um, for another video on this. And so, so watch out for that video. And I'll have a, a discount code there for an even uh, greater amount off. I don't remember how much it is. I think it's twenty dollars off. I offer, I give you ten dollars off, um, but I think, I think, don't quote me on. I think it's going to be twenty dollars off, or maybe fifteen. I, I don't remember. 
Um, but I, when, when I get the codes in the mail from Hobby Zone, um, then I'll be able to tell you exactly how much you'll be able to take off the price explained. So just hold off. And if you miss the sale, you can still take $10 off by using my code of all caps FGFRC in the coupon code or field in, the, uh, in your checkout when you go to checkout. So there you go, folks. Great little plane. Can't wait to fly her. Of course, I've flown her many times. I've, uh, this is, um, I've, already, I've already had this T-33, and I've got several videos out on it, but I never did an unboxing or a build video or assembly video or a radio setup uh, video. And uh, so, there you go. <laughs> I, I've now done that so you can see everything. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless y'all. And don't forget, faith, family, and friends. And then toss them in Boston Jets. Bye -bye.